testing in general is a way to execute software. So if you're doing things that don't actually involve a program counter going down a program, it's not really testing. It's some other form of validation. In testing, you have a piece of software under test, and a workload is applied to it to measure the actual behavior of the software while it's running under a particular workload. And Oracle generates expected results. So that means you have something that isn't the software telling you, for a given workload, what do we expect to see out the other side of the software? You then compare the actual behavior to the expected result, and the test passes if they match and fails if they don't. Note that this can be a little tricky because sometimes the expected behavior of a software is something unusual, such as the software terminating when you tell it to shut down, and the test passes if it's supposed to shut down and it actually shuts down, or if a process dies under a kill command and it's actually supposed to die. So it isn't about whether the software does something that you think seems reasonable. It's simply about whether the software under test does what it's supposed to do according to an oracle that predicts the correct behavior. Some anti-patterns for testing are when you see primarily ad hoc informal testing, people just going beating on software to see what happens, that's probably not good testing, especially if that's the bulk of the effort. If you have no defined notion of test coverage, that's also a problem. Test coverage has to do with the question of, well, did we do enough testing? We'll talk about that more later. If there's no defined pass test fail criteria, that's also a problem. If you don't have an oracle and you're not matching the actual behavior against an oracle, that's a problem. And here again, we have people just beating on software to see what happens. That's not testing if you don't have an expectation of what the right answer is supposed to be.